Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss some properties of series. Uh, we have been talking about Maclaurin series and Taylor series, so we know how to compute them as per my previous videos. So, to, so previously we figured out the Maclaurin series for these common use, commonly used functions like e raised to power x, sin x, cosine x, tangent x ln 1 plus x etc so we're gonna use these series as the base and we're gonna figure out some more complicated series using the properties of series before i jump on to the properties of series i would like to review the concept of even functions and odd functions with you so just a quick reminder so what is an even function so we learned that an even function is a function which has the property that if you replace x by negative x you still get the same function back for example if we uh, consider our function fx is equal to x square which is a parabola so this is an even function why this is an even function so you can verify so you can find the value of f of negative x so wherever we have x we're going to replace that by negative x so overall again we get x square which is equal to fx so f of negative x equals to the original function fx so this is our even function so there is a property of geometrical property of even functions so geometrically the function is symmetrical about y-axis so here is a graph of another function so if you consider this function fx is equal to x4 minus x square so again this would be an even function because you can al always verify you can change x to negative x and you will see that you get same result as fx so these this function is symmetric about y-axis so all the even functions are symmetric about y-axis so if we consider the function fx equals to cosine x so again this is an even function and you can look at the graph of the cosine function or even you can verify it algebraically so if you want to verify this so if we change x to negative x so that would be cosine of negative x and we know that cosine of negative x is same as cosine of x which is equal to our original fx so cosine x is also an even function so all the even functions they are symmetric about y-axis so next we're going to talk about odd functions so an odd function has the property that f of negative x is equal to negative of fx so in other words if you replace x by negative x so it replaces the function by its negative and uh, let's do a few examples so if we just think about fx equals to x so this is an odd function why because if you want to verify you can always change x to negative x and you see that you get negative of the original function so x is fx so this is an odd function again if we consider this function fx is equal to x cube x raised to power 5 minus x cube and the graph is given over here so this is an odd function it has odd powers and if you want to verify so you can replace x by negative x so here we get negative x raised to power 5 minus negative x cube and then negative x raised to power 5 means negative x raised to power 5 so minus and minus plus x3 and i can check the negative sign out and we get x5 minus x3 and x5 minus x3 so that was our original function so negative of fx so f of negative x is negative of fx so it means this is an odd function and if we look at the graph of this function so geometrically these functions are symmetric about the origin so odd functions are symmetric about origin 
So if you have polynomial functions, so that's why actually even and odd uh, functions get their name. So the fact is that even polynomials contain only even powers of x. So even polynomial contains only even powers of x. And odd polynomials only contain odd powers of x. So it means the even polynomials are even functions. Polynomials with odd powers are odd functions. So a few examples that you can consider. We already done that. So x square, x4 minus x square. So if you have only even powers in a polynomial, so those going to be even functions. But if we have only odd powers like x cubed, x5 minus x cube, x7 minus x5. So these going to be our odd functions because we have all the powers of variable odd powers. All right, so now let's think about this one. So if you have x plus x square, is that an even polynomial or odd? Even is that an odd function or even function? So Sometimes your function might be not even not odd because if you try to check the property fx equals to negative fx, f of negative x equals to fx, so it wouldn't work like both the definitions wouldn't work. So these are not neither even nor odd, nor odd. All right, so let's talk about the properties of series. The McLaurin series for uh, odd function contains only odd powers of x. So McLaurin series for odd function contains only odd powers of x. So if we think about sine x, so sine x is an odd function. And we notice that the series of sine x is given by x minus x cube over 3 factorial plus x5 over 5 factorial and so on. So this one is containing only odd powers of x. And also, if you look at the graph of the sign, so it is metric about origin. And if we think about our cosine function, so McLaurin series for an even function contains only even powers of x. And we know that cosine is an even function. And its series is given by 1 minus x square over 2 factorial plus x4 over 4 factorial and so on. So it has all even powers of x. And cosine function is metric about y axis because it's an even function. So that's the first property. So if you have an odd function, so McLaurin series is going to contain only odd, odd powers of x. If you have an even function, McLaurin series going to contain only even powers of x. So the next property is a new series may be created from an existing series by substitution. So this is very important property. So this helps to reduce our work. So for example, let's say if we know the McLaurin series of sine x and we want to find the McLaurin series of sine pi x. So I'll start with the McLaurin series of sine x. So we know that the McLaurin series of sine x is x minus x cube over 3 factorial plus x raised to power 5 over 5 factorial plus x, sorry, minus x raised to power 7 over 7 factorial and so on. So now if I want to find the series for sine pi x, so what I'm going to do is replace x by pi x in the original sine series. So in the original series of sine. So by doing so, we get sine pi x is equal to pi x minus pi x cube over 3 factorial pi x raised to power 5 over 5 factorial. So basically, wherever we have x, we're going to write, replace that by pi times x and so on. So we got the new series just by substitution. So for cosine x, we know that the uh, original series for cosine x is 1 minus x square over 2 factorial plus x raised to power 4 over 4 factorial and so on. So if you want to find cosine x square for this one, we're going to replace x by 
x square in the original series. So we get cosine of x square is equal to 1 minus x square square of that over 2 factorial plus x square 4 power of that over 4 factorial and so on. So this is our McLaurin series for cosine x square. So any new series may be created from an existing series by substitution. So next property is that a new series may be created from several existing series by adding, subtracting, multiplying or dividing them. So you can uh, do all the arithmetic operations in order to get a new series. And if you have division, you have to be careful. So in case of division, so we need to use the method of long division or synthetic division. So the result is valid as long as you don't get division by zero. So let's say we want to find the McLaurin series for x squared times cosine x. And if you don't want to do the traditional method, if you don't want to find the first derivative and the coefficients, etc. So one way the shortcut method is you can figure out the McLaurin series for x square is x square because we know that McLaurin series for any polynomial is the polynomial itself. And also McLaurin series for cosine x is given by 1 minus x square over 2 factorial plus x4 over 4 factorial and so on. If we want to find the McLaurin series of x square cosine x, so we can multiply x square with the series of cosine x. And that will provide us the desired series. So in this case, we get x square minus x4 over 2 factorial plus x6 over 4 factorial minus x8 over 6 factorial and so on. Thus, we created a new series by using our existing series. So if you don't want to use this method of multiplication, you can always uh, find your first derivative, second derivative, third derivative and coefficients and that we discussed in one of the previous videos. And the next property is which is the extremely important property. So a function may be differentiated or integrated by differentiating or integrating its McLaurin or Taylor series term by term. So this is one of the very useful um, application of the series. So for example, let's take the example of sine x. So we have the series of sine x. And if I take the derivative of this series, so it means I need to take the derivative of each term of the series. So derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Derivative of x cube is 3x square. Derivative of x raised to the power 5 is 5x raised to the power 4. And derivative of x7 is 7, 6, 7 x raised to the power 6 over 7 factorial and so on. So now in the next step, you will notice that. So there, here we have 3 factorial. So 3 over 3 factorial. So 3 times 2 times 1. So 3 will cancel. So we are just left with 1 over 2 times 1, which is 1 over 2 factorial. So we get 1 minus x square over 2 factorial. Again, here 5 going to get cancelled. We, we are left with x raised to power 4 over 4 factorial, x raised to power 6 over 6 factorial and so on. And what this series is, do you recognize it? We did that on the previous page. So this, the when you have only the even powers of x, so we have cosine x series. So this is equals to cosine x. Let's consider one more example because you might say, oh, we already know what is the integral of sine x. It is cosine x. But let's take a look, of, a look at this example. So integral of sine x over x dx. So there is no exact formula for this integral, but we can drive its McLaurin series. 
So we know that the McLaurin series for sin x is this. So if you are interested in sin x over x, so the series would be, so we divide each term by x, so we get 1 minus x square over 3 factorial, x raised to power 4 over 5 factorial, negative x raised to power 6 over 7 factorial, and so on. So now we can take the integral of on both sides. So we get integral of sine x over x dx is equal to integral of all this series with respect to x. And we get so integral of 1 is x. Integral of x square is x cube over 3. And then we have 3 factorial already. Integral of x raised to the power 4 is in x raised to the power 5 over 5 times 5 factorial minus x raised to the power 7 over 7 times 7 factorial and so on plus c which is our constant of integration. So this is the integral of sin x over x dx. So we have learned four properties of the series. So first property is Maclaurin series of an odd function contains only odd powers of x. Maclaurin series of an even function contains only even powers of x. Second property was a new series may be created from an existing one by using substitution. Third property is you can create a new series by adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing the existing series. And the last property is a function may be differentiated or integrated by differentiating or integrating its Maclaurin or Taylor series term by term. I hope that makes sense. If you like this video, hit the like button. I'll see you next time.